Here's a basic breakdown of almost everything you need to know on how to sell a tennis racket on eBay. So if you're like any other reseller, a lot of times you may or may not have a niche, but you often find yourself selling items that you're interested in. So for example, I enjoy playing tennis, so I find myself selling more tennis rackets than I do certain other items. By no means is it an exclusive category I sell in, but I do enjoy it. So um, I've got a couple samples here, and I'm just going to talk about some of the things to look at and things to look for um, when you're both picking through tennis rackets, but as well as how to list them. Um, so I've got a couple different generations of rackets here. Um, the basics I'm not going to go into, specific models, specific brands. Um, you can find umpteenth uh, YouTubers that can explain to you how to how to run comps on, on eBay to find what is what is valuable to sell. All of those rules apply for rackets. Look up the brand, look up the model, find out if what you're looking at is worth selling first and foremost. This is to cover all the details once you have something that you've determined is of value and worth your time um, to sell. So I've got two Wilson rackets and one Yamaha racket. Um, I don't have exact years on this. Um, this one's the more modern of them. Um, this is probably 2010s. Um, the Yamaha is likely 90s and the Wilson is also likely 90s, maybe even 80s. Um, so a couple things you're looking for. Condition we're going to start with, obviously. Um, condition is not unique to tennis rackets. That's something you're looking for for almost any item. Um, so you have the actual racket head, face, whatever you call this. Um, don't quote me on technical terms, but it's going to be enough to get you through. Um, so the actual frame you have here going around the circle is the first thing. Um, the most common thing you're going to find that's going to make it immediately not worth selling is going to be a broken frame. Uh, it can be very minor or it can be very obvious where this is no longer a continued um, round piece where it's actually bent through, broken, whatever it may be. That makes renders this useless, not even worth selling at that point. Um, so looking for that, the next piece um, beyond just an actual crack or break is just going to be wear and tear. So you can see here, it's pretty significant wear. Um, depending on the player, obviously you can be scraping the ground um, if you're, um, not to quote <laughs> particular uh, famous athletes, but you may have a habit of having an anger problem and throwing rackets around. Um, so looking for those, making sure you're highlighting those, those pieces. Um, the next piece is going to be the actual guard. Um, so on this particular racket, you can see it's a lot more worn down. So you can see this distinct plastic piece that continues off of the frame itself. Um, I'll continue on a different one here. So you can see the same frame here continues on. So that guard is a completely separate piece. Um, for more expensive rackets or for, for players, that can actually be replaced. Um, personally, I don't play aggressively enough to have ever replaced one. Um, I tend to just play it and knock on wood, I haven't actually cracked a racket below that. Um, it's a little less obvious here because the black cut was pretty far, but then you can see here, continues here. So looking at the condition of that, oftentimes underneath that can be more significant wear to the frame. So take note here, you can see a pretty significant paint chip here. Um, so make sure you're highlighting all of those, both in pictures and descriptions. Um, next up is condition of the strings. Not a whole lot there. Um, oftentimes you can find a sticker that shows when the racket was strung. I don't have it on any of these three. Um, that's not really relevant because more often than not, if somebody's buying a racket from you, they're either just going to play it till it cracks or put new strings on it immediately. So all I do is mention is are the strings intact or do they need to be restrung? Restrung is obvious. You have a broken string. Um, you find the pattern, follow it through. If you see any disruption in the rectangles or squares, you know it's broken. Just because it slides does not mean it's broken. That's pretty normal for strings. Um, the pattern doesn't have to be perfectly symmetrical. That's the nature of it. Um, that's about it for condition. The last thing I guess really is going to be taking note of the condition of the grip. And that's going to segue us into the next criteria. Um, so you see some of the older ones have these leather grips, uh, more modern. Um, I don't know what material this is, but they tend to uh, flake off pretty well. This is getting my hands um, pretty dirty. You can't tell. Um, if you are a reseller, this is a personal choice. I never regrip rackets um, when I resell them. Personally, when I regrip rackets, I do them to my own criteria. Um, you might be able to draw parallels to that in other in other selling categories. It's just a personal preference of mine. 
um, but please make note of that when you're selling. So if it's if it's deteriorating, if it's crumbling, make note grip is grip is uh, crumbling and needs to be regripped. Grips are incredibly cheap. Um, I've got one here. Costs a couple bucks. I don't know how much I paid. It's a three pack. Pay maybe three or four dollars or dollar grip. It's really not that much. Um, and again, if you really want to, that can be a cheap way to to upgrade it. But personally, most people want to put their own grips on. So. That's it for condition. I'm sure there's plenty more. A minor little note is maybe that end cap might be missing. So you can see here, that's missing. These two are intact. Um, now moving into some of the specs. So you wanna obviously look at uh, manufacturer model, which goes for almost any product. So here you have Yamaha as the manufacturer. Not gonna lie, I didn't know Yamaha made tennis rackets until about a month ago. Here you have Wilson. Wilson's written here, even though it's faded. The W here. If you don't know what you have, use Google Lens if you see a logo. Uh, maybe, for example, you see this on the end and you can't interpret that. That'll bring it up pretty quick. Um, Wilson, obviously, being a pretty major manufacturer. Um, Head is another one, and I'm not even going to go through the list, but it's a lot of different ones, and a lot of them have the entire spectrum of high-end rackets all the way down to, to cheap Walmart-type brands. Um, so that's your, your make. Now, your model is going to be different for all of them. So here you have Pro Staff, here you have Secret 04, um, and keep in mind, it's gonna have a name and likely have a number next to it as well. Um, here you have Profile, and again, you see some other numbers, 2.7 SI. There's gonna be lots of distracting things, dual taper beam, some of them describe the features, some of them are the model. So take note of that. Google's your best friend, eBay's your best friend. If you have no idea if dual taper beam is the name of the model or if 2.7 SI is profile, um, just do a search. You'll see how people are listing it. The more the merrier, throw all the info in there. Um, so that's it. That's a big factor when you're looking at what um, value carries in. So just because it's the profile doesn't mean it's necessarily gonna be the same value across all those models. So keep note of that. Um, the next place to find a lot of the details is going to be on the inside of the frame here. So you see a lot of info there. On this one, you got more info there. This is where you're going to find a lot of the made in, so the manufacturing location. You're going to find um, other specs there, which is now what we're going to talk about. So grip size is a big one. Grip size you will either find here um, or you will find on a sticker on the outside. So you'll see a sticker here. Um, and it will be uh, both a measurement and a alphanumeric. So in this case, it's four and three eighths. That's four and three eighths inch. Um, it's around the actual grip itself. And again, this is deceptive because if somebody has put a custom grip on it, that's going to adjust the actual um, the actual circumference there. So four and three eighths. That's the standard grip prior to somebody adding their own stuff. And then L3. L3 is an alphanumeric that references four and three eighths. Sometimes you only see L3 or L4 or L1 or L2. I don't have those memorized. It's not too hard to memorize what each of those because they're progressive. Um, but if you find one and not the other, again, Google it, look it up, reference it. Um, so that's that. You'll likely, if it's in good shape, you'll find the sticker still on it. If it's been used, the sticker's probably worn off. The next place to find it is going to be on this inside. And then the last place to find it is going to be on the very bottom here and it's usually very small and very bad um, contrast when it's on here so for instance it'll be a black base cap and it will be engraved in black on black so get that magnifying glass out put your your glasses on whatever it may be worst case if it doesn't make note that it's there's no inscription of it you can maybe put um put a clothing tape measure around it something that's actual string or something that's um, that's not a metal measuring tape around it to get that measurement, um, but be clear that you have measured it, not that it is marked as such. Um, next up, you have head size. So this is usually a measurement of square inches. So again, you're going to find it in here. Cubic centimeters is another way you'll see that written. So the more European or, or overseas models that are not made in the U.S., um, you're going to see that or maybe not sold to a U.S. market. So for instance, this one is 95 square inches. Um, and for instance, also that happens to be in the model number. So 95 S, 95 correlates to the head size. You'll see here, this one is a little bit larger um, and you'll find 
that measurement also um, inside. Again, I don't have that one here. You'll find it either in here, around the edge is another place you will find it. Um, sometimes it'll be written along this side. Same thing here. This one's a much thicker frame. Sometimes you'll find that information. Sometimes it will be worn out um, on here. So you're looking for that information. You'll almost never find any of that here. It's really only grip size here. So look for that number. Same thing. If it's missing, you're probably not going to calculate um, the, the square inches on that. But make sure if you have it, you include that because that is a relevant factor. Um, as far as most sales go, the head size is a much more significant factor um, than most other things, but that's more for shopping different models and stuff. I personally do not care too much about grip size, but most, play most players do have a preference of grip size. I don't think there is a very significant trend in terms of a particular grip size that sells better than another. If you know that's the case, you're a much more experienced seller than me. Um, but I have not seen a particular grip size that just does not sell. Like shoe sizes, you know, the more extreme size sizes will take much longer. Um, so looking at those factors, those are some key pieces of how you can identify the different characteristics of a tennis racket, the different things to make sure you're highlighting in the listing, and the different characteristics to make sure that you're both selling the correct item that you have and making sure you're getting the, the precise value out of your item, as well as giving all the information your potential customer may want. Um, stay tuned for more. I'm going to start doing some more highlights of particular items that I have maybe an above average amount of experience selling um, and just going th walking through the different nuances and, and pieces that I look for um, as I am selling those things. So if you have more questions or you have answers beyond above and beyond what I know about these, feel free to chime those in. Otherwise, thanks for tuning in. We'll see you on the next one.